Thank you. Lesson number one, never believe what anyone says, unless you've checked it out yourself. <laughs> well, this is a tough act to follow. Ken Robinson and TEDx, New York. I had uh, Larry Lessig. Uh, nowhere in their league, but it's very inspiring. In fact, I shouldn't even say anything. I mean, Ken Robinson pretty much said what I have to say. Um, so are there educators in this audience? Great, great. That's wonderful. And youth, I know that I see some. And the rest of you, are you just here to see what we do with the youth? <laughs> well, in any case, um, my passion is about education. So, I got into this because I didn't think I was ever going to get into this, into education and trying to see what I could do for it. That was not my goal in life. But when you see all these issues, and when you see the youth of today not believing, not loving, not getting excited by the way we've created a system, you've got to step up and do something. I went back to school at 50, so please don't ask me how old I am today. That's a secret. But at 50, I went back and got another degree. I'm a molecular biologist, but I got a degree in education at the age of 50. And I decided I was going to do something. Something came up, OK. How many of you have seen this issue of New Yorker? It is a beast of burden. That's what we've created at this time. A real beast of burden. If you look at what this particular child, it's a caricature, it's a cartoon. But in reality, it speaks volumes of what we've done to our education system, not just in the US of A, but actually everywhere else. There are very few countries that really are teaching our children the way they need to be taught. In fact, we can't even agree on how to, ta to, to teach our youth. If you remember the past slide, that is part of the problem. We can't agree which one is right. No, my way is right. No, 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 no. My way is right. No, my way is right. We can't stop. We can't compromise. We can't move forward. We are stuck in space, in place. So, This is my son. This is not, it's a bad picture, but it's my son. I was walking behind him. He's a high school um, a senior right now. This was last year. But as I was walking behind him, I don't know if you can see the depth of that bag behind his back and the one on his side. How many of you go to work like this, the adults in the audience? Oh, you all got to work like this? So why are we doing this to our kids? When I go for my, now I've got, started going to work and I bring with me, uh, you know, a bag. I can't live without a bag, I'm a woman. I bring my uh, iPad. I bring a phone. And I bring lots of pens because I love pens. But that's a different story. But this is what we're doing to our kids. So when we think about these kids in the audience today, and hopefully all the kids, youth, that are watching this um, broadcast, know that the way they are learning, the way they're spending their time, the way they are uh, getting information, the way that they want to learn is not through one size fits all. They expose themselves to lots and lots of different kind of material, media, and they have all that. Why is it that we haven't woken up and said, let's do something about it? Now, what's the crux of the problem, okay? What is it? 
When I started doing this uh, project, I said to myself, what would I, could I do that was just a, you know, a small, uh, small part of this whole picture that could actually maybe change the path we're going to take? And I went down and I started looking for things. And, and I was looking and I realized, you know, we, I live in Silicon Valley. We are creating and generating ideas. And my friend, uh, Brendan Boyle, who's from IDEO and, you know, was going to be one of the speakers later on, he can tell you how much innovation happens in, in the world. Yet here we are with our kids. What do we have for them? A textbook. Now, what does a textbook stand for? In my mind, I think of a textbook as a technology. It's a different kind of technology, but you know what? It is rigid. It's outdated. I love textbooks. I love books. But you know what? I can't change the information in that. Our states, California was paying $650 million when we started uh, the economic downfall, $650 million. They're outdated because they're costly to change. It takes us about seven years to change a textbook and get it back into the hands of our students. Guess what? You get one flavor. One size fits all. Here it is. We are required to give you information that's yours, that you can have. Guess what? We are going to give you this textbook. Peter, Paul, Mary, whoever, this is it. Go learn from it. You know, folks, I think it's time to change that. So we came up with the idea of flexbooks that can be flexible and can be current, that can be affordable, and can also be customizable, because that, friends, is the cause of where we are. We don't have a system that treats our students, our youth, our children as individuals. Like Ken, Ken Robinson, Robinson implied that we have a factory model that we're creating these same kind of, you know, images. We've got to move away from that. So, oops, Pluto. Now, this is a great example, and I love to give this, but I'm sure everyone knows this. Poor, poor Pluto. The smallest planet in, the, you know, in our solar system. And guess what? We just said, Pluto, we don't think you're a planet. Okay? So Pluto, the planet is no longer. How many of you think we can do that with a textbook? There's conversation happening that says Pluto actually is a planet. So now what are we going to do? We're going to wait for seven years to get that information to our kids? And I was, I was in, in a training session for a very uh, respected teacher training place. And I asked the students in there, I said, how many of you know the Pluto story? They were all science teachers. Not a single hand went up. How are they going to know that Pluto is a planet or Pluto is not a planet? Pluto the planet, Pluto not the planet. How are we going to keep pace with the changing world? How are we going to pace, keep pace with the geography that's changing? You know, Russia has changed. Europe is changing. Everything is changing around us. How are we going to get accurate information into the hands of our students so that they can learn in time? So, keeping, keeping in mind that you know, there is centuries of work that's been done in a textbook format, keeping in mind that we should, we also should know that every kid doesn't have access to technology or computers. We should be able to pro provide printed textbooks or printed material 
that could be online, that can be updatable, and open in the sense that it's yours. It's yours to do what you want with it, to take it in the form for way that you can learn from it. It's high quality. It's customizable to the teacher's lesson plan. It's customizable for the student within a classroom. Notice I said student, I did not say students. Because that's really the important part in trying to do anything. It's about treating a student as a person, as an individual, as someone who has their own ways of doing things. Customizable to their learning, difficulties, their needs, whatever the case might be, let's start providing them that content. Multimedia illustrations. You know, when I grew up, when I was in school, my textbook was black and white. Even the, the, the graphics were in, it, in it were black and white. And I would go to sleep. I just couldn't go, th go through that book. But nowadays, we have the capacity to give students all that. You know, uh, there are lots of ways to illustrate a, a concept. So we can do multimedia illustration, you can do animation, you can install videos in it, you can uh, insta you know, put foreign language translation, which means that if something as simple as hovering over a word so that you, a, a, a student that has English as a second language, can actually still learn because the concept is made clear to them in their own native language and they can continue learning forward and not be held backward and think that they can't learn. These are easy things to do. What about students that, that have limitations, that have need help, they can't hear, they can't see, they can't express themselves? Today, I think we, sh we can provide them those abilities. We can give them what they need. Teachers, this is about youth, right? This is about the young people. But today, we can also help the teachers at the same time. By the way, I still consider myself a youth. I don't think I'm old. Um, we can embed good teaching modules in there so that teachers can learn from each other. We know that there's, doc there's, there's uh, research that shows over and over again that a teacher is a lonely figure in a classroom. They don't have on the spot in real time, access to information to deal with any particular issues that they come up with at that, any, that moment. So why don't we help them at the same time? We can do it. This, this is the one that I think is really going to be helpful for us as we go mo move forward, which is dynamic adjustment. That means if a child is going slow, or a student is going slow, we should be able to help them, give them stuff that could help them, you know, understand it in, in different ways, in easier ways, at their level. You start at the student's level, rather than where you want them to be. That's a harder place to get to for a student if you don't start it the place that they need to be at. Content, the difficulty. These are doable things. These are no longer imagine this issues. These are doable. So I'm going to take a few minutes. And I, I was given OK to do this, that I could speak about this project, because now I, I do have to show you a little bit about this project. We provided, we've been around for four years. Oh, let me tell you, we CK12 Foundation. It's a nonprofit. We have created content for high school and middle school. It is, um, it's uh, all online. It's been done in the last two years. The, this content came up. So imagine the whole textbook aligned to every state, aligned to every requirement. A state, 
can come in. School district can come in. A teacher can come in. A student can come in. And even parents can come in and customize this and create their own content. Suddenly, it becomes relevant to them rather than us throwing content at them. If a teacher can teach them within their requirements. You can still say, I'm meeting all the regulations that you need to meet, but still be able to do the teaching. You can then, we actually provide ability to give you different outputs. So whether it's the new toy on the, on, the, on the market, the iPads, the Kindles, all the netbooks, computers, we give, we, we, uh, you know, we provide the content for all those different devices. We also provide a templated version of the content so that you can print. Print what you need. Not more. You don't need to have a thousand page book. You can just take what you need. And the good thing about that is, like I mentioned earlier, that you can actually change course. You can course correct if the student isn't getting something. You can still do that. So, all our content is completely free. We don't charge for anything. Only thing you pay for, and that's your own cost, we don't come into it, is the printing of this. So I would love for the youth to show your teachers, show your uh, educators that, you know what, you can take your education into your hand. Today's your day. I challenge you to show me that you can do this. So for people who need more information, please go to the website. But I do want to say, this is a great opportunity. I'm, I'm, you know, this is a great time in, uh, in our lives to be alive because lots of changes are, changes are happening. And we are doing our bit. I'd like everyone else to do their bit. Please do something so we can change the mess we've got ourselves into. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.